Before I start the show, I'm excited to announce that our Patreon is live. Patreon's a direct link between content creators and their community, which allows listeners like you to fund the show directly. For just $5 a month, become a light dusting member, enjoying merch discounts, a free t-shirt, and access to ad-free episodes, level up to the $15 solid snowfall tier, and also enjoy exclusive invites to on-hill meetups, a free sweatshirt, and a monthly shot at winning prizes, which include this month's prize, a wired snowboard. The first draw will be at the end of November, so sign up today by going to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and searching F and Rad. Every little bit helps. Thank you very much. The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers. This game-changing tiny home camper is built by Never Summer in Denver, Colorado. Inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture, these 12-foot lightweight campers at just 1,500 pounds are a masterpiece in design. Enjoy sleeping like royalty under the stars on a true queen-size mattress with a moonroof in your secure home-like bedroom surrounded by ample ventilation and shades for privacy. Stay cozy with a propane heating system and enjoy well-lit interiors powered by rooftop solar panels. And when it's time to cook, ingenious exterior countertops include a sink and a double burner stove, all under a giant bat wing awning. Skyview Campers, redefining adventure. Visit skyviewcampers.com to start your journey today. Wired Snowboards offers quality hand-built custom snowboards built and tested in the coastal mountains. Wired has built me several one-of-a-kind boards that have stood up to my daily shred habit. In fact, my first Wired Chase is still my go-to PAL board after seven seasons. Wired brings my imagination into existence. That's fucking rad. Check out wiredsnowboards.com and design yourself a board to last a lifetime. Fix snowboard bindings are simple, durable, and functional, featuring tool-free adjustments and a lifetime warranty on buckles and base trays. Fix makes bindings you can count on. Jason Bros created Fix after a bald face trip where his bindings failed and he vowed to build the world something better. I've been riding Fix buckles for the last three seasons and they're still like brand new. He's on to something. Fix snowboard bindings built better. Rip Curl Outerwear is designed to search further in the snow, offering strength, durability, and all-around performance. Whether you're venturing into the backcountry or on the resort, Rip Curl Outerwear's got you covered. With a team that includes Chris Rasman and DCP, you can be confident that Rip Curl prides itself on creating jackets and pants with technical features that will keep you comfortable on your search. For over 35 years, the Boardroom Snowboard Shop has been Vancouver's premier snowboard shop. Check out the Boardroom's unmatched selection of snowboards, bindings, boots, outerwear, and everything you need to shred. The Boardroom's passionate staff and performance guarantee ensures you'll love what you buy. And remember, the Boardroom ships to anywhere in North America. So go to boardroomshop.com or visit their stores in Vancouver and North Van. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop. Outlive your friends with New Green's Turbocharged Organic Drink Mix. New Green's is a great tasting 100% organic, vibrant green juice mix, and they include sprouted seeds that leave the food in its most natural, healthful, raw state for fast digestion and maximum health. Use code FNRAD at newgreens.com for 20% off your new daily breakfast routine. New Green's, my daily go-to. Stay tuned after the show for a chance to try New Greens for free. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. I've set the intention that FNRAD Season 9 will include a big focus on mental wellness so I'm stoked to be partnering with The Haven on beautiful Gabriola Island. 
The Haven's 40 years of experience sharing knowledge about how to live more effectively as humans has helped many people. I just got back from a five-day retreat and I'd describe the experience as transformative. I know I've spoken a lot about psychedelic assisted therapy, so I feel the need to say this was not that, and it was just awesome. The Haven has a full range of programs based on a foundation of radical honesty. Tap into your inner resources and liberate yourself from self-defeating patterns within the context of a group, in it together, helping to provide empathy, witnessing, and self-acceptance. Go to haven.ca for more program information and use FNRAD10 at checkout for a discount. Also, feel free to DM me your questions about the Haven. Fabian Rower is a Swiss legendary pro snowboarder. He's still ripping for nitro snowboards. And his son Jeremy is pushing him to keep his freestyle skills on lock while Jeremy's totally ripping. I made my way to Pemberton while he and his son were visiting an old friend of Fabian's, Mike Michaelchuk, at Greenwater Resort, an absolutely magical place to stay. If you're a world-traveling snowboarder looking for the perfect shred vacation, book a stay at Greenwater. You'll be stoked that you did. Fabian won the Innsbruck Air and Style in 96, and he competed at the 98 Olympics in halfpipe. Plus, he's overcome some pretty big personal challenges to land where he is today shredding at a level beyond what was possible in 98 with his son who's also as i said totally ripping proud to bring you this awesome conversation with the great fabian rower i'm a i'm a little swiss man typical swiss <laughs> yes and i love cheese and i have a swiss <laughs> knife army knife and i love chocolate and i'm here now since seven days and i I miss chocolate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a little bit. Um, no, I I I started. Um, you know, I saw snowboarding. I, all of a sudden, I was in the skate shop and I saw Jeff Brushy, Terry Hawkinson, and in a Burton film, and I was like, "Mom, I I, I want this. Really, I really want that." And then um, I started to to ride, learn snowboarding. And then I did some competitions. Wow! And that was that was really great. What and was then the... I wanted to get sponsored. <laughs> and the only way for Europeans is to get sponsored uh, is when you do good in competition. Right. There was not like Peter Line and all those guys. You film and you get a hell of sponsors and money. No, European, you compete or you're done. So I had no choice. So I had to compete. And then the Burton uh, Swiss uh, team manager came up and looked at me and I went to my father and said, nah, we cannot take Fabian. He's uh, not good enough. Wow. But back then I, I already bought a, a nitro snowboard because yeah. I found nitro really cool. Yeah. And, and then uh, step by step I got into this uh, nitro thing. And they always said, we're a big family, we're a big family. I was like, yeah, what a market thing. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm still in this big family after 30 years. That's epic. And that's really good. When I was 16, I went to this, um, I, I didn't feel right in this system. So I went to the, to the director of the school and told him, listen, I, I'm... I'm um, listening to my heart and my heart says i should not come anymore to your school wow. and uh, and i think fish go out of your aquarium so that's what i want to do and i just wanted to tell you goodbye and thank you very much so when i was 16 then i left school how did he react to that in switzerland a no-go <laughs> really not and do you want how re react my my mother? Oh yeah. She went to order a gin tonic at the <laughs> bar, and she was like, "I gotta have a gin tonic." <laughs> so, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, do whatever. I'm gonna go now." Yeah, that still sounds kind of like she's accepting it. She's like, "All right, I need a drink, but you've done it, so good luck." It's always important in life that when you do a decision, that you. You 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 communicate it clearly, yeah. and uh, and that's also for you helpful when you make a decision and you say, I go that path, and uh, that's uh, what I did until today, Good. and 
you know, it sounds easy and cool, but I had a really hard time um, until I got professional. So I had to, to compete and I had to train. And I wa was actually the first who had a trainer, oh, coach. Wow. Nobody else had a coach. And I was the only one who had a coach from a different country. I didn't give a shit about Swiss, Swiss coaches. I uh -oh. was like, no, they're not good enough because the <laughs> best are Swiss, uh, uh, Finn, Finland, Sweden, Norway. Mm -hmm. They're the best. So I need to go there and train there. So I went to Lapland, uh, Finland, and uh, there was nothing. The Huluporo, the wild reindeer um, bar, that was the only wow. bar. I, I, I went a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, but there uh, up there I trained r really hard and uh, with the Finns. And, uh, and then in the beginning of, of the season, I always did this Finnish championship and I won it once. Sick. Uh, me alone against 300 Finns. That was, <laughs> that was not my dream, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this is actually the beginning of this whole thing. And then I went into the World Cup and I started to win everything. Damn. Uh, it really, everything. Who was the coach? Let's shout out that guy. Juha Sulkakovsky. Yeah. From uh, and my mental coach was Hannu Lakonen, and he was actually um, uh, um, coach of tennis. Yes. But he was like a he was a mental, like a mindset coach. Yeah, and I know now how they work, the Finns, and you know they don't talk too much; they just do. Right. And with not too much of feeling, they're like machine. So. I still have it in me. I did this Ninja Warrior thing, uh, like that's what it's year, really called. Two years, no Ninja Warrior. Uh, I I was invited. You know this thing? No. In Ninja Warrior competition. No, no I don't, I'm not sure what you it do is. the obstacle okay. course okay. over water. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you have this. So a, a really uh, a tough obstacle course. For sure. For sure. Like, you you have to hang and you know stuff. what i have seen i've yeah. i've seen it you, I know you've it seen is. it yeah. so so they invited me and and uh, um about i talk about this mental thing so <laughs> i was the smallest sure and the oldest and they looked at me and laughed a little like <laughs> <laughs> this little swiss smurf in germany <laughs> and i was like i'm gonna kick your ass later yes and uh, i won and nice. uh, I was the oldest ever who, who won this competition. No way. So that proved me that I still have this mindset in me and I can switch it. What was the uh, foundation of the mindset? Like how, did the, how does a coach teach you the mindset? Like is it over the course of years? Is it no, you know, kind it, of right away? Uh, you, you have to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't ask questions too much about okay. when where how uh, yeah you're prepared go there do it that's it so when you fail that can happen no yep. problem in life go again go harder yeah and um, that's it well wow. <laughs> as simple as that yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah you, you know it's always um three words i i hope i can say it in uh uh in english listen knowing want to do it and then do it what three are the three things. words in is it in swiss you were going to say it wissen wollen tun it's i i know yeah and i want yeah and then you have to do it yes and the point three they lose the most of the people in life because they know yep. they want but they don't do it oh that's my snowboarding in a nutshell you know, yeah. but also in life, yeah. they want to change life. They na 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 na, and they go to the yoga course and do everything and yoga and meditation. But you know what? They don't meditate every day right. at six o'clock for one hour because they don't do it, and right. that's the main problem. And I learned I learned that uh, um, with the Finns. Yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, are the Finns like that? Just generally, like hard-working um, you know like the knowledge the and and the ability and then the doing mm. or or is it that it's just a little other culture 
It's culture. cold up yeah, north. Yeah, you you gotta Finland, like yeah? it. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta like it. It's it's not like Italian, like warm and hello. It's more. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a little tougher, but yeah. uh, I think uh, they're real. Yes, yep. Creates uh, creates a good. And they're community. funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Finns are funny. <laughs> Norwegian are funny, and the Sweden are really funny. The yeah. Swedish guys, I I, I love them. Yeah. I went riding with them last winter. The Swedish uh, nitro team. Nice. <laughs> I had a hell of a blast. Yeah, my my son too, but. Uh, you know, uh, after those competition things, um, in Europe, uh, they said I have to go to America, then there and that, there. Then uh, I was in a bar at the uh, um, in Innsbruck and there was the Aaron Style on. Aaron nice. Style was a ba- a back then a, a huge competition. Massive. You, you know? Yeah. That's so where most people heard t- about Red t- Bull in our community. Okay. Like, because Red Bull was, at the beginning, it was like some yeah, illegal yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. No. It had like so, bull so semen Terje, in it or something. Yeah. Terje had an a injury uh, and couldn't ride at this competition. Yeah. But he was on the list. So I was in the bar. Then the organizer, Huri, came up to me and said, Fabian, you want to ride, but you're a pipe machine. You cannot ride this competition. But you, if you think you 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 want to do it, do it. Yeah. Right. Terry is not here, so you you take his place. Wow. You're not on the list anywhere. Right. Right. And I was like, okay, Hudi, I'm gonna compete. Sick. So back then, '95, then the Peter Line was there. Ingemar Bachmann. Um, Daniel Frank, nice. uh, every, everybody. Epic. Uh, so, <laughs> so I got into the super final. Wow. With Johan Olofsson, oh, yeah. te, uh, Daniel Frank and me. Oh, wow. And then Johan was, uh, I don't know, uh, just in a good mood. And he said on the start, you know, I'm not fighting for first. You can do it, Daniel Fabian. I gonna do a tail grab one foot, and we were like, "I remember fuck? that." <laughs> what is oh this? Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! And he really did it, stuck it, and uh, big respect. And of course, Daniel and me, competitors, we were um, going for the nine, and uh, I was a little further, and uh, yeah, got it. And uh, he was a little pissed because I, he thought, yeah, Terry is not here. He's going to win. <laughs> but uh, nah, then <laughs> I won. But the, it's not the end of the story. I went to the organizer back to Huri, who said, I'm a pipe machine. I yeah. said, hey, Huri, thank you very much. The pipe machine just won your competition. <laughs> and the highest air, I won a KTM oh uh, machine. God. Because after my nine, I, I made the highest air on the quarter pipe right after the nine. So I said, Huri. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. <laughs> just be careful what you say yeah. to some, you know. Yeah. I just won it. Do you think you would have been as persistent if, had he not said that? You know what? Like... He pushed me. He pushed you. Yeah, yeah. it was fine. Yeah, I, I I was used to that. You know, always to prove yourself in yes. in competition. And uh, yeah, a nitro was always so so neutral in everything. They were like, yeah, do it if you yeah. want to do it. And and uh, th- until today, I'm 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 really feeling comfortable with with them because they let me do. Uh, they let me ride, and the Sick. main thing is snowboarding, yeah. right? Yeah. And not about what you you have to do. This you're in the team, and you go with the team. You know, yeah. right? Just go and ride and have fun. Do you need some boards? Yeah, I will send you some boards. Okay, where do you go? Ah, oh, yeah, you do this podcast with Eric. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> things Sick. like this. It's just good, and that makes me feel comfortable. They've been going the same team, right, Tommy? has been there since the beginning. There's another guy that's been there the whole time too, right? Is he partners? Tommy has a partner or something? I don't know a lot yes, about Nitro. Yes, it changed a, 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 a little little bit. A little bit. Be, yeah, but uh, Tommy's still still there. Then Andy Auerhammer and... Um, yeah, um, so it's been the same people. Uh, Hannes, though. Hannes, because nice. I, I, I hooked him up uh, with this job, actually. Oh, sick. So so they're uh, those three three dudes now doing uh, running ni- Nitro. Uh, yeah. I, I can't believe, yeah, because when you look at, 
you know, so Burton's been run by, you know, the same family the whole time. Sims kind of came and went with a bunch of different iterations. And, you know, many of the biggest ones like Rosignol and Solomon, I guess it's family owned at the end of the day. Like there's some family in charge yeah, it's of the a, whole a thing. Yeah, it's really family thing. And when yeah. you would see his his company, it's actually his house <laughs> <laughs> built another house. And in there, it looks like a really house with few rooms and there they make their meetings and they so eat cool. together and it's it's uh, uh it's real yeah and uh, a lot of companies try their marketing to do yeah we are yeah but right i am not i'm not sure you know if it's really so so real and you know in snowboarding it's really really important that um something got lost and uh it's the the spirit of snowboarding um it got lost and uh wh why is that like this i think it's it's a competition thing everybody is competing they're athletes and uh, they have to do that they have to do this and uh, triple cork and snowboarding is an expression sport yes you show something of you Truth. and um and this got lost. And um, what I want with my son, of course, he's riding nitro too. <laughs> no, nice. uh, Burton actually asked him uh, a day in Innsbruck. They they went uh, came up to him and say, "Do you want to ride for a real brand?" Oh, wow. and he was like, "No, I'm riding <laughs> nitro." <laughs> no, no, it's, it, it's it's funny. No, but what I want, and that's a serious thing now. My son. Is I'm raising up. Uh, I, I raise him up alone since ten years, and I want that he gets the spirit back. The next generation of me is having the spirit of snowboarding again, and Nitro knows that. And I told them, you can sponsor him. You can sponsor him and do everything you want, but he's not competing. Mm, nice. He's not doing any competition right. because I know so many fathers. Uh, or parents, helicopter parents. Yes. That, no, no, we're having fun, you know. No, they're pushing them like hell. Yeah, yeah. Full gas. And this is not correct, I think. Because a nine-year-old or an eight-year-old cannot make decisions. You guide yeah. as parent. Yeah. So then yeah. you push him into competition. No excuse. Right. So I do the opposite. I was always a little the opposite guy and and i think um for him it's it's re healthier and and more the joy here of learning snowboarding and that's why i'm here at chuck's place mike michael chuck because i told him you're old enough to meet my my bodies nice yes and take a slice of them of everybody, cool. of Max Plötzenäder, of of all the guys he meets now, um, uh, everybody he he saw Terry, uh, Nicolas Müller, he was riding with. Wow! Um, wow! Yeah, and he's we're doing actually. I can tell you later about. He's just on Instagram. You yeah. find him on Instagram yeah. and and TikTok. Yeah, he has over a million views on his posts Holy on shit. TikTok what? because you know what he does. What we do, we do three things. Yeah. We do tutorials. Yeah. Then we do the battles. Yeah. Father son battles nice. with Those points. Are great. Yes. Yeah. Backside plant slide. <laughs> yeah. Me and him. And then yeah, we, we give it. some points. Always three jumps. And we started to do because I think it's a little bit it starts to get boring for him. Always do that with his father. <laughs> so I started to ask like other riders. So he started to do this battles uh, on Instagram and TikTok uh, with Eroetala. Nice. Heike Sorsa. Come on. And Marcus Cleveland. No way. Marcus Cleveland is, uh, we're going to hit it out this autumn. They made a battle together, a really hard one. <laughs> and he, 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 I think he didn't know who he was. Of and he course. was like, yeah, can you do a, um, uh, you know, on this rail, like a, a, a back lip to send off. And he was like, yeah, I I try <laughs> and then they went up and did it and you know what after one run we were done one run both of them stuck it 
boom. No way. And I was like, you both are machines. I'm Epic. sorry, but really, Jeremy, respect, and Marcus, of course, respect too, because you did shotgun yeah. together. Yeah. You know? And that's so and, rad. Yeah. So what we do is this. Yeah. Uh, just on Instagram, on TikTok. So your viewers will be cool to check him out. Oh, actually. yeah. Do it. Uh, we have perhaps to. you can put his, his name in. I will uh, for in, sure. <laughs> because you only see him there. That's With amazing. his yellow a helm, a helmet. <laughs> yeah. um, he laughs so much. I don't know. He looks like a little. <laughs> Do you you wearing a helmet now? Yes. Were you back in the competition no. days? There was nobody in a helmet at the f at those first Aaron Styles. Nobody. That would was be wearing. Aaron No Style. No, even the advanced tri triple crown. Right. I won also here in, in uh, America. Uh, we did not, or I had here in Whistler also rail competition. Nobody was, uh, there was this circle, the circle snowboard yep. shop here yep. in Whistler organized the competition. I was, uh, nobody was, uh, yeah. How interesting, no helmet, right? No, like, no what, helmet. Just, no. And, and I just outed myself as someone who's like, oh yeah, helmet wacky style, but, but it's not. All the kids now with a helmet, I don't even but think But it makes sense, you know, and I didn't wear a helmet either now, but now he's 11 and he starts to ask me. Yep. Why don't you wear helmet? Right, my and kids this is, too. This yep. is not right. So uh, I'm I'm riding for TSG, um, and he does too before me. Oh, sick! And they said, yeah, we I get, uh, we're gonna give you protectors, and uh, and I said I don't. F I have like too much <laughs> stuff on my head. I don't know how I. I don't feel right when I ride. And they they made this. I don't want to make any promotion, but for me that was so impressive because. They made this super light helmet. Okay. And I put it on here the first time. Yeah. That was the best ever. <laughs> I, I don't feel anything on my head. That's great. So That's so good. On my head, it was really good. So so I really, really uh, ride now with a helmet. Yeah, cool. Excellent. All the time. I should be too. I hit my head last year and I Shoot. bought a new helmet <laughs> and, I, and I tried to wear it. Then, then I saw a picture of myself in it and I was like, oh. Come to Europe, then I gave you one of this company. Okay. Yeah, the okay. distributor for them up here is my oh, they friend. Have, uh, yeah. They bike too, yeah. They uh, make they, bikes do they? stuff a yeah. lot and back protect. They're big, TSG. right? Like they're, yeah, they're really big. Yeah. Yeah, they're rad. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So on the parenting side, yeah, there's... Wow, has has the landscape ever changed since we were kids, right? Like, when we were kids, the world was kind of just this free place where you were out running around all the time. And now it feels like the expectation of society is that you've got your kid at school, you drive him there. He's it, gotta be the, the best. Then you get and, him picked up and you put yeah, him in a program this. where there's yeah. somebody else watching them yeah. all the time. There's some adult in control of the situation at all given times. That's and why it, I'm here with, at yeah. uh, Mike Makerchuk's place. He, yeah. he can run around here. He, I bought him an arrow and uh, uh, he's shooting around I here. saw it it's like yeah, a yeah. compound bow it's, yeah, it's like a, a real yeah, yeah a real yeah, one yeah. yeah and uh and he's driving around with his golf car <laughs> yeah. and uh, he he's really feeling free here and that's what I want to to show him he was and coming in hot right here and, and Mike's like hey <laughs> slow her down a little <laughs> yeah, bit which is awesome he's it's got okay. that he has that he, it's it's good that excitement yes. and that like um you know like Let's go quick. Yeah. Let's go and fast. And you know me as a father is I'm getting, you know, I'm gray hair now. <laughs> <laughs> he says silver, silver fox, you fox, heard that one? Yes, <laughs> okay. Totally. So, it's just it's just really nice to have uh, um, uh, a good time with your son. I'm his filmer and he is my filmer. So, oh, all the footage perfect. you see of me, yeah. he is filming me and Yeah, you were showing filming. me footage. I was yeah. like Dude, with that's the solid. handy, you yeah, know, and that's it's, solid, and and uh, this is uh, really good. So I, I I can have a really good time with him now until yeah. until he doesn't want to hang out with me anymore. You know, right, with 15, right. 16, you sure, don't want to sure, sure. ride every day with your father. You know, but like this, we travel around. We 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 have a good time in snowboarding uh, on a. Ha 
professional level, of course, yeah. but a good time. He, he has yeah. no pressure. You have to go in four years at the Olympics, <laughs> so you got to train this and make right. the double this right. year. Right. I go for style. Yeah. You see his footage like three. Uh, I jump with him next to him, and he just does a 360 over 15 meters yeah but with style yeah because dope. express yourself after he, he he's landing his tricks i mostly ask him how do you feel how did that what feel? was that feeling yeah and yeah. he's like that <laughs> and i said yes I, yeah. Th yeah that's it you yeah, know that's, that's the cool. thing that, yeah. That's what I would like that you feel in snowboarding, Jeremy. Yeah. Once I'm not here anymore, or you feel bad in life, go make a three. Yeah. You feel good again. Yeah, Just yeah, this that's rad. Just small thing. Yeah, speaking of which, then you showed me the footage of your Switch 9. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When, yeah. You, when you want to yeah. feel good, God damn it, if you can do a cab nine, holy shit. It was 47, that's why I think I get interesting <laughs> again on the market, yeah. because there are not too many... 47 year old dudes around doing uh doing i think things like this yeah uh, so i got this phone from knut elioson and yeah. uh, we we are discussing a uh, thing uh, or he he said that uh yeah they're gonna take me to the international nitro team again as the wow. oldest rider wow and and, uh, and that um yeah gave me good feeling it, it's a you know my family and uh they helped me a lot and I gave them, of course, a lot too back, but um, yeah, it would be cool. And Jeremy, he's officially in the team, of course, but I get back officially. That's uh, excellent. And, and I really like that. And the interesting thing is, you know, the Nitro is so, so cool because they, they called me up, said, we want to do an OG camp. And I said, what? So original gangster camp with all the old riders oh wow and i said that's a good idea so i am organizing now the the, the a rider list now yeah so we have nicola toast you Sick. know uh, we have so many uh riders coming in this uh may yep next may yeah uh April, April, April for a spring session, and we we shoot there. Sick. Nitro uh, sends filmer, photographer, uh, the almost uh, pretty good band, an original band from Nitro is gonna play there. Sick. So, <laughs> so you see, things like this is is really cool. That's you know? so cool. Ba we gotta get Quinn Sandvold to show up, man. I was yeah, at his place they, yeah. in in Colorado, and he still got the old Diablo. Remember yeah, the Diablo? Diablo? Yeah. Oh my uh, god! You know, Seth Neary is gonna show up oh, probably. That's epic. Uh, perhaps Miller. Yeah. Seth Miller. Yeah. Then we have uh, John Smallwood. We have uh, some writers in in. Um, what a rad idea! Yeah, that's it's great. an idea of them. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's why I I like this brand a lot. You know, yeah. they appreciate that they, they celebrate snowboarding. Yeah. They celebrate still snow with old guys and they say yeah, yeah we are gonna shoot you guys yeah. and just yeah. go for it and we are gonna post it on Instagram you gotta bring you gotta bring Ben Belock I mean the guy is still shredding so hard and I know that for the end of his career something happened with Nitro where it they just kind of dropped the ball I know that happened to Cessnery too yeah and it went in America a some stuff it can wrong. Like that. Uh, of course, a, it's a big company. Yeah, they right? just kicked yeah. their, them yeah. out. I heard that, and that was not fair. But Ben is but one of the raddest riders, yeah. and he's still so. Give me his contact right then. I will. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm I gonna to sure. write him. Yeah, it's yeah. really important that we have. We don't forget the U.S. Uh, people and sure, uh, perhaps sure. Canadian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they totally. they should show up. Yeah. yeah, that would be so sick, dude. I think if I was. A rider who'd been on a team like that and got that call even if I didn't go I'd have such a but you understand nice me a little bit why oh, I'm totally. still riding with them yeah you know, man, I, of I get other offers too now you know yeah, of brands yeah. they would give me even money or sure, stuff sure and I'm like nah sorry eh. It's this okay, is my place. You know, it's just, it's, yeah, I know that. It's and it's a family, like you said. There's something and it's about true. It's understanding not the marketing, that. you yes, know. Yeah, uh, uh, really not. And and that's that's why this brand makes it so real. The the whole snowboarding and I I celebrate snowboarding like this. 
uh, with my son together and they, they help me uh, live this dream so yeah. they say hey Fabian come with us to Sweden hey we are gonna plan probably to go to Japan to write some powder oh, wow. I'm like <laughs> I'm in Jeremy we go to Japan <laughs> so yeah how did you become what are the circumstances that led you to becoming a single dad because that's that's a challenge in itself and all the way from the beginning of his life he's 11 now and since 10 years so yeah his mother had had horses and and uh, it's all about it's actually really easy so horses 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 and I said look there's no space for me and my son so yeah. go your way yeah but leave us alone we do uh, stuff but then putting up my company and everything that was quite quite hard okay so, yeah me. yeah so like you you had a company that was was like as your no after snowboarding i was <laughs> lost because after snowboarding yeah. you were a rock star you had too many girls too much alcohol <laughs> and and uh, and too much money and um so yeah i lost everything Wow. I drank too much alcohol. Yep. I got those panic attacks. Uh, yeah. I, I was uh, two years in a, uh, locked up in a room. I couldn't go out. And I had really bad time. And uh, I lo actually lost myself. And I, I didn't know myself, I think. And I, I didn't love myself. Nice. So I yeah. had to start uh, I, two ways. Kill me or change it 180 degrees so I changed nice and I started to meditate and everything and then this whole thing came up man I was like oh what is, is happening you know yeah 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 but but everything came so real and I started from zero and then I I I, I, I quit school as I told you in the beginning of this talk so I had nothing nobody took me for a job Mm. So mm. then I went to my drunken guys from the bar, from the construction. I said, could you help me out with a little job that I could help you on the construction? So I did that for two years. And I had, of course, I couldn't pay the tax. So I was like 120,000, I think, dollars, US dollars, <laughs> in minus even. Oh, uh, no. And the government had to pay me 1,200 Swiss francs because I couldn't make it. Our system is when you cannot make it anymore, they give you money. So the yeah. government yeah. paid me money to help me that I can pay food and stuff. Wow. So my parents didn't yeah. help me at all and, and yep. I, I was really alone. Yep. After this construction thing, two years later, uh, um, I can talk and I and I I understand the whole system a little bit and I started to sell houses. Cool. Then I started uh, to understand the system and I built uh, I made a company and I worked for this company me myself yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. and I paid myself a little little money out. Sure. And the company paid my tax actually. Ah. You know and no I way. paid the the money back that landed the, the company to me. You understand what I mean? Totally. So this whole system, I, I suddenly understand, and that they, 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 they got it. And, um, and, and so, so I'm on zero now with the tax. I'm fine. Wow. I don't drink wow. since two years. I yep. meditate every day at six o'clock um, since 20 years wow and I, I really do and I I started to do Qigong Tai Chi started to learn how to breathe then I changed my my way of, e of eating you know the food and stuff and I'm still normal you know I'm not this <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> but but I changed a lot I think I, I got to a to a more handsome guy um you how, know how like what's the breaking point you're in the room for two years and you're having panic attacks yeah it sounds like i i, I was able to go out when i was drunk okay yeah. oh okay okay so you have yeah i i get it so you're fighting like self-esteem issues you're fighting 
Like, what do I do? Destroy do I, myself how do I, step by step. Yeah, how do I... Obviously, if, if the tax you owe is 120 grand, then the money was awesome, right? For a while. And then that money just dries up and you don't know what to do. And so you reinvent yourself. I but lost was, myself. Was there a point where there was like a rock bottom? Like yeah, where you woke I, up I, and you're like... Yeah, I, I was drunk one evening. Then a police officer came up to me and I looked at him. I said, I'm going to get you now and I hit him really bad because oh. he he saw this little smurf Fabian yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah what does he want but uh, yeah he failed because I, I yeah then I was 30 days in jail and this uh, okay. this started to that's a pretty big deal right like at that point you've got 30 days of drying out where you're thinking about your life and going okay when I get out of here I'm either going straight back to it harder which will kill me or and, I've and gotta make you gotta a imagine that change. that in Switzerland, I'm kind of a celebrity. Yes. So I was in Saturday night shows like you have here in, in the yes. U.S. or yes. Canada. Yes. And uh, this was always a high risk that the newspaper writes it, and I I was really lucky that they they never they missed got it. me. They you missed know? it. We okay. don't have those paparazzi in yeah. Uh, Switzerland yeah, 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 like yeah, you yeah. have here. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was sneaking out a little bit of yeah, that, and yeah. uh, but it was a risk, you know. You get really like loser um, uh, when you get have an alcohol problem or whatever, and um, especially yeah. problems with the police. That looks yeah. Bad. Also, it's a that loser so style, bad. you know. Yeah, but but yeah. I, I I didn't feel right, and actually, you know, I'm not like this. I'm a really peaceful. Just mm. don't give me a few tequilas, then I might get into an animal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could see. Yeah, it. we we have a lot of um, stories. Uh, uh, Nitro would have a lot of stories to tell. Yeah, uh, that um, I was jumping in to an onsen. Uh, that's like a bass, um, like a natural bass in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> They separate them <laughs> from men and women, and I and I, <laughs> and I. W they gave me sake. This yeah. is this drink from Japan. It's so And nice. me and Max, we got so drunk. <laughs> then we went into this uh, snow in front and scrolled under the snow naked, and then got up and made a surprise to the <laughs> Japanese girls and wanted to show them a, a European thing. <laughs> And they didn't find that so funny and called the police and na na Nitro Nitro helped us out again, the team manager from Japan and oh oh, so God. many things uh, happened and Nitro had a hard time with a few team riders back then but sure. but it was rock and roll. But yeah, yeah. we won a yeah, lot. You yeah. know, we had a lot of podiums always, you know. Yes. That that kept the balance kind of. Yes. You know? uh, so yeah, we did bullshit yeah, but yeah. we won the European Championship. Also I was win, three times right. world champion and wow. I won this and Tokyo wow. Big Air and I yeah. won actually all the competitions. So it was okay. What an era, hey, to like party so hard and also win. They like, do that too today, you but think it's so? just yeah. yeah. But of course, uh, in Formula <laughs> One, they drink too. Sure, but uh, sure. you know, they just don't talk about it no, so much. It's we not didn't a part drink of the every day. Yeah, it no, was I, just I, after after the competition. But you there, drink. There is a point where, like, when Sean White becomes unbeatable, that I'm not imagining him going to a bar, getting shit faced jumping off a building and hurting his leg you know what i mean like yeah. he's like looking at his watch going i'm, I'm guessing here yeah, yeah. that he's going oh yeah, yeah. it's 11 o'clock yeah. i'm an hour past like yeah. when i should be getting because i got to get up at 5 a.m and do two hours of training before the yeah. pipe softens or whatever so it is who did that the I, program in his head probably his parents and um and possibly I, and i think yeah. uh, that's a little sad because he, he he lost a lot of good moments there's a big you know. there's a big uh, documentary just came out about his life uh, from hbo uh -huh, okay. and it's supposed to be amazing okay and i i've been told by listeners hey man stop ragging on sean he's actually like super rad dude so i think i think the reality is somewhere between 
like you know, a it's always a, a che- you know, a lot of people are jealous about you know. Oh, I, hell yeah. I, I wanted to write. Yeah, I saw Peter Line, I saw the forum crew, and I looked up to them. But I had no choice in Europe: do competition or you're done. So I had to go f- for and check out who pays me the most. And back then, it was was Adidas who paid me uh, really a lot of money. Yep. But I, I, I would love to write for Foursquare. Sure, sure. Or, or, or all those cool brands you had um, back then. Uh, but I had Adidas. And uh, that was not cool. And uh, the scene, like Sean White was feeling that, uh, don't like that. Because you're, uh, how you call that, you're a... Uh, you're a sponsor bitch sure Uh, you just go for money but you know he's a business he he made it clever he had a good team around him yes and he made the toilet paper uh, who has a a toilet paper um brand like sean white toilet paper (laughs) i saw it yes and and this this is really funny what i don't understand you know it can go too far i saw a a scooter in a skate park a sean white scooter i think this is a little bit too far far. that's selling out Uh, but the rest i come on he made money so leave him and he has a private jet i would too you would too if we can afford it sorry we 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 go to los uh to los angeles to to ride today and fly back sure why not he's on another level of celebrity than anyone in snowboarding ever really has been but you go but right back to the beginning and craig kelly was you know he wasn't partying as hard as the as the community he would you know he was taking competition yeah, but seriously. greg kelly I, I was walking up on mount kenya with greg kelly and i was riding there with greg kelly and um he did not smoke, he did not drink beer, but he was a different kind of person, li- like Nicolas Müller. Nicolas Müller is a special guy, so so try to understand those people, like Terry Hawkinson, he's a special guy, and the public, just make them a stamp yeah. on, and sh- give them shit all the sure, time. Sure. And you know, try a uh, look in the past. What happened? Why is he like this? Is it really that bad? You right, know, right? I don't know. I think the the case for those three guys, Craig was perfect. He had a perfect life because he passed away quite young, yeah. and he was the one who led the way with, "Hey, competitions isn't all that. It, it's not everything. I'm I, I'm not going to compete this year. I'm going to go and ride powder." And people yeah. went. How the fuck are you going to do that? Like, yeah, but what What about the money? And he went, it's not about the money. It's about the real thing that keeps us going in snowboarding, which is what you're talking about today. I think with Terje, it was unfortunate. I think with Nico, there's a little bit more substance to why he got canceled. Yeah, of course. I, I think, know. and I've just spoken with him lately. He He misses snowboarding, and I would say wholeheartedly with my whole heart snowboarding misses him yes this is true yeah. i'm so sure yes. they want to see him ride again yes and um they just yeah i think he's just, ready i think this yeah, year he i will. think he's coming back yeah, to yeah. ride you, you'll and see I th- yeah i think you'll see it, is it's, exactly it's like yet. me yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like me i'm ready again yeah. i want yes. to ride again yes. and shoot and do stuff it's hard to be it sounds like it's hard to be the guy who is competing at the tip of the sword of the progression of the sport and then that gets away from you and there's now there's new kids that are doing it and may, maybe they're doing it in a way that you don't think is that awesome no problem yeah. but you know it's Instagram and social media time and you know so many writers come up and one year later you don't see them anymore it's yep. not like back then like Greg Kelly and uh, Jeff Brushy or Jim Rippey you know or, or right we, we're oh. starting to get like, yeah, we're good. Good. Okay. All right, you got to tell me that. This is a great, uh, a great story. Who organizes the Red Bull, uh, Aaron style? What was it? It was like a, like a get together of all the past champions. Ah, oh, yes. They, um, they, they made this get together. Uh, Oh, uh, at the competition, all of the people which won, like Jim Rippey, 
Nice. Everybody was there actually, and uh, Gimple and we uh, they called us on stage during the competition and gave us the ring of glory. And uh, Gimple got it, the golden one, because he won it, I think, three times. <laughs> Aust uh, uh, Austrian machine, but um, that that uh, yeah, that was a special thing for me. Uh, that you know the meaning of this competition for me was actually the most important and more than the FIS world champion title I won with this golden snowflake uh, you know thing. Yes. I, I have it yeah but the ring of glory of Aaron style don't have too many people and uh, yeah, I'm one of them. And who that who made else me was there? Hard. You you've mentioned Rippy, Gimple. Uh, where was where was everybody? It? I think it Peter Lyon, Johan Olofsson. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody yeah. was yeah. there. Really yeah. big names from Sick. back then. Big names, which influenced snowboarding until yes. today. Of yes. course, the young kids don't know, but those were the guys which influenced snowboarding quite hard. <laughs> uh, my, my son brings me with his the golf cart of Mike Michael Chuck. Uh, uh, yeah, he we just me watch some you. drinks, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's and killer. he helps him. Uh, he helps him do some work on the. Property. How so? It's like Uncle Mike, basically. You say you said like you said, it's time you're old enough to meet my friends. And I'm looking out my periphery here. I'm seeing your son is driving Mike Michael Chuck around. In a golf cart <laughs> yes. while they do the cleanup duties Airbnb for cleanup. the Airbnb yeah, stuff. Yeah, he helps uh, him. Yeah, and uh, then they they shoot with the arrow. They do this. They do that. <laughs> he uh, was just uh, shooting a uh, gun you know, behind uh, us he, here. He yeah. doesn't want to leave uh, no. this place. It's really magic here. But um, you know, this is uh, the part of being a dad, uh, showing him. Uh, yeah, you know, I I didn't do you know everything wrong in my life just there, there were a few wrong decisions but mainly it was good because i'm snowboarder for life yes. and my family you know not only nitro but all my guys which i was competing against are not are my friends yeah and uh, i still and social media is not bad when you <laughs> use it right right and like right. this i got in touch with all my bodies again yeah and uh, and to see them again and have a good time go and ride with them on a quite high level that oh <laughs> it's nothing better and to bring your son that seems incredible to me it seems incredible. he can be a part of yeah my life yeah still yeah uh, and he can join my life still um i don't know how long he wants to do that but i can influence him for later well i can tell you right now uh riding down in bear valley with uh with chris roach and his son Ryder. chris roach yeah. i remember too oh yeah uh, so yes. roach's son Ryder is 16 right now and he just rips so like if you remember which you obviously do you know like roadkill and the days of the like movies of riding with your buddies and now roach rider if wrote uh rider roach is one of those people in chris roach's crew so like they're still riding at that awesome level you know including really particular cool style of how to ride you know what I mean? Expression. Expression. Uh, we totally. have to learn them again that snowboarding is a expression sport. Yes. And you express yourself. You show something. Uh, together with nature, you see, you 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 found a, a wind lip. You have to be creative too. Totally. And uh, that's what Terry has in his plot, and. Um, and a lot of other riders too. Nicholas, but, uh, you, big time. Nicholas, big and Miller, big time. There are so many other riders like Jamie Lynn back then, really good rider. Yep. The, some old riders said, "Hey, your son has a little bit the style of Jamie Lynn." Wow. And that, and here came up, who is Jamie Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, 
when they compare uh, you with him i tell you you can be happy man <laughs> they never did that with me <laughs> <laughs> that's epic the the european jamie lynn or the french jamie lynn was aaron vincent remember aaron vincent might be before your time no he was he was on a boards like after a uh, after, david vincent oh uh, david not aaron sorry david yeah david david vincent yeah, yeah this guy Dude, i know that style is I know. so bad i know he didn't yeah. do too too good in competition i think he was not the competition guy right but uh david vincent i i remember when i came into the world cup he was uh still riding yep not too long anymore but uh he yeah that was the jamie lynn of uh right am i right on that one i just remember his style being so badass you know our our scene in europe is is quite big it's just yes. you know as i told you that we had no not too much of a pure opportunity to to film like with mike hatchet or um with those hatchet brothers with the, for the those Mac cool Dog. films right right we were a scene just we had really good free riders too but just not on film mm -hmm. uh, we were you just they just showed up on the competition right right that's R it yeah yeah that's crazy that's crazy yeah so let's go back to um your career that you built after snowboarding so you start literally just on the tools like helping people with renovations on homes is that no 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 it's, it's really on construction when they made a construction somewhere like yep. building homes up i just uh, brought them sand to make concrete you know because i didn't learn anything about that so i really started from zero wow so after two years and knew a little bit uh, how it is works, then I, 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 as I said, started to sell houses and I uh, built this uh, my real estate company. And uh, I, I was working really hard, but I took this from snowboarding. Once I make a decision or I, I drop in, I will not stop. I will go. Sick. And this was actually the same what I did with the real estate. There are so many other real estate people around like snowboarders but i didn't care uh, and then i started to grow and then it was uh, I, I i compare it with playing monopoly <laughs> so when you play it um uh well uh, with a good tactic yep. you're gonna succeed really good what in was real what was the first house that you bought what was the first place actually i bought one apartment okay yes and uh and then i sold it and i bought a house with six apartments oh then wow uh, i bought the house with seven apartments and uh, another house i think with a little more apartments and some shops i rent out retail stores yeah yeah retail yeah. stores yeah so i do this and i clean every monday you see me cleaning the stairway uh, of the house because for me it's really important um, that I'm in touch with my renting people that I know where the problem is and that we talk on the same level yes I'm not the house owner and the right. money maker you know yeah. I, I'm same level I do some renovations myself um, I plant the stuff I do all the gardening myself and my son helps me there too because Sick. when he wants to get money he can yeah. I, I overpay him you know <laughs> but um, of course but he needs to do something cool yeah yeah that's really so cool. that's my way now i'm not in the system of getting up in a more of course i get, get up but just nobody tells me what to do i'm uh, i can choose my 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 way uh, every day myself and this is for me really important to live freestyle and uh, make my way and uh, that's what i do i do every day uh, i work uh, in the morning and in the afternoon i go skateboarding do meditation go in tai chi course uh, I, I skate with my son or we go snowboarding i go you know how many times i go snowboarding in a week in winter time four times wow that's i go a lot. wednesday afternoon friday afternoon saturday and sunday with my son Amazing. every week 
That's amazing. And I love it. That's a lot. And, and it's, you know, back then when I was riding Adidas, I was not those forum guys that said, yeah, he's not core. <laughs> he's not core. <laughs> sure. So where are all the guys which were core and not riding anymore? I'm core. Yeah. Dude. More core than they saw. <laughs> because I, I really ride and I love riding and I'm a snowboarder till the end. Yeah, that's it. I, I was shocked. And I was talking a little with Mike about it. I'm like, it's crazy for me that someone like, say, Damian Sanders, when I talked with him, I'm like, when's the last time? Like, not even I said, I was like, how many times a week do you go? And he's like, holy shit, I don't think I've gone in 10 years. And I was like, how is that possible? That someone who's riding at that high of a level has just let it go. I have no answer for that. Right, right. I think I it's know. injuries. I think it was just injuries for him. So for some people, you're too injured. I mean, yeah, you're I have, looking at me I like... I have 12 <laughs> screws, dislocated <laughs> yeah. shoulders, yes. blah, blah, yes. blah. I cannot move my thumb. My, uh, this is blocked to... Uh, come on. Yeah. Then go ride powder. Right, right. Or do whatever. Yeah, yeah. Go split boarding. You know who we haven't talked about, which is a common friend, is uh, two great common friends. Um... Harry Goons and Paul Gruber, very um, huge, uh, important people in snowboarding. A lot of people wouldn't know their name. He's a big name now in Burton. He's making the Burton Europe thing. R oh, Paul really? Gruber, yeah. Yeah, he was the European Craig Kelly. So his style, when you rode with him, you could see he just had the flow in such a perfect way like he was really really a fun person to to get a chance to ride with you in whistler F funny guy also at the bar i tell you <laughs> <laughs> really really yes. all those innsbruck posse yes uh, they were re really cool guys those um o austrian guys they were really 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 nice yeah yeah so those so both those guys are from austria Yes, I hanged out with the Austrians a yeah, lot, a lot. Yeah. yeah, and then Reto, is he Austrian or Swiss? He was He's Swiss, Swiss, yeah? Swiss from St. Moritz, Pontresina. Oh, St. Moritz. Yeah. That's yeah. a pretty high-end, ritzy place, yeah? Yeah, but yeah, but Pontresina is the next village. Okay. He lives there. So not as, not as bougie, not as... That's everything there expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's still in snowboarding, right, Reto? He had a shop for a long time no, or he something? Was doing, uh, he was running for Bogner. Bogner, Fire right. and Ice. Fire and Ice stuff. He did those films, Fire and Ice. Yes. He was uh, 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 doing all the snowboards filming. He had uh, the Swiss Air Force team yes. with Bertrand Denervaux and... Um, Camille Brichet. And Camille Brichet yeah. and all those guys. And, uh, and then he designed... He was uh, re really into this Bogner... Uh, a company yes and yeah and i don't know something happened there so willy bogner died and oh no he's, they kicked him out i think bummer he didn't do any contract yeah but oh, i don't man. know i don't yep. want to say any details sure, sure, you know, sure. i'm not sure but is he still around snowboarding from time no, to time I don't you don't see him. see him he he uh married a i think a brazilian Okay. Yeah, or something. He's yep. more, yeah. There. Yeah, he was I, he was in that first generation of world traveling professional snowboarders. European, yes. Y yeah, he was in the mix over here too. You would see him in Transworld, you'd see him in snowboarder really? magazines. Yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. was one of the first guys to get through to be like kind of a big name European rider over here. Um and then it was the invasion of the scanners and yeah yeah then they came <laughs> yeah yeah they came too but that's yeah. why I, I went to scan to the scandinavians yeah yeah for sure like good place to train so you do airbnb in some of the suites what was the number of rental suites that you have right now uh 24 i think <laughs> that's amazing yeah so for someone like myself that eventually would like to have some doors that I rent out. Yeah. What what is the what's the advice? Where where to start? Actually, it's it's quite easy because I didn't do any school 
in real estate or anything. Wow, yeah, you just, just started just selling real estate. Just listen to your heart, open your eyes. Just do. Yeah. Don't be afraid. It's right. like snowboarding. Be creative. Go for it. Try. Can you do a photo for us to have a bear spray for him? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, nice. Uh, it's just, uh, just in case. Yeah, there's real bears up here, hey? Like, that's the they deal. I saw a grizzly bear over there. That's crazy. For us Swiss, you just, it's, it's really... Yeah. Uh, this is scary shit. I don't think... After Switzerland, you said we that. have... You know what problem? Where's the cheese? <laughs> Where's the next chocolate chop? And we don't have bears. Grizzly bears. Yeah, grizzly. I'm going to have there. a hard time He's now with, uh, w with going back to, like, feeling safe. A grizzly bear is a gnarly, gnarly predator bear yeah it's not a joke and they they seen them not far away from here holy shit oh cool we nehmen schon das Viertel für uns hier oder als Filmli dort dann ist es yeah so that's about my life hey and I'm still riding oh, I really I'm, love and I want to come to this uh, what was that bombing humming or what did you know what was it no this uh, volcano yeah, that's holy boy, holy shit. I dude. would like. We you go have to there. Go. Yeah, yeah. He I would go with love Jeremy that. there. He would I love can, that. Is that a? Uh, can we just ride there or? Do um, we there's two public days after the whole event, but you need to get an invite to the event. I'll, can you I'll, check I'll, that, please? I will for sure. Yes. I would like to. I really come. Yes, you're I doing really it right come. now. Yeah. And I bring some other European riders. Oh, that like would be Max or something. Bring Max. Yeah, yeah. yeah Max yeah. will come. So you're one of your best friends is Max Plutzenator who he was one of the Europeans that made it over here a little bit too, but his name is so clunky for, for Americans. It's, it just is, I, I think they were going to try and, and shorten it for at one point. It's like Jamie Lynn in Europe. Really? Jamie Lynn doesn't work. It's not no, no, uh, like Max Plotzenader is like Jamie. Oh, Lane he in is like I'm Jamie. Lane. Yeah. yeah, as yeah. It, it's, it, that, you know how known he is. In the snowboard scene, he's really known. Yes. In Europe. Right. And he was a big influence uh, in Austria. The uh, the best guy for years and years was Max Plötzenader. Yeah, yeah. So I've, uh, the Austrians. his pro models were yeah. legendary by Nitro. Even you knew the, yes. his pro model. Yeah, yeah. We sold them. We sold them over here, it, even though like... They don't know him, nobody. but the name was yeah. on. Yeah, yeah nobody cool. knew the name. And he, his yeah. pro model has has had this snake yes. uh, skin on. Yes, dude. Yeah, because he likes strip clubs and uh, <laughs> the stripper had those, you know, the snake, snake leggings on. No yeah, way. yeah, that was the inspiration of of the. Yeah, yeah, that's an amazing he board. He showed actually. me those strip clubs in uh, in Las Vegas and stuff. I didn't know that in Europe uh, we don't have this. And then uh, with lap dancing, this is really, I think, not a normal thing because, you know, then they come on you on the la lap dancing and then you would like to touch the boobs and you're not allowed. But this is, this is not normal for a man. You cannot make him horny. You pay money and then she says, no, don't touch. You are not allowed to touch me. And then after that, she leaves again. Yep. That does not make sense for me. I think you're going to get cancelled Then I'm exploding on this one. and I have to <laughs> deal with this problem. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, I've it's never weird. I've never liked strip clubs for that reason. I'm like, what who is this for? You're there yeah. with your buddies. Yeah. And you're like what so what are we doing? We're going to pretend that this doesn't turn us on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. that's a weird uh that We're in a weird space for now. For Europe, European, yeah. but that was uh, nonsense for me. I remember, I remember <laughs> Harry Guns just being like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? You know what he told me uh, that always stuck with me was that he was addicted to surfing. He was like, "You need to go surfing." A lot of people have told me that over the course of my life. Like, get out there, get in the water. Surfing is the pure form. I think snowboarding is a pure form. I really do. I think I I enjoy it more. The I mean, I've never learned how to surf. It seems so hard. Yeah, surfing is compared. hard. We um we have in Switzerland actually the biggest surfing scene from whole Europe. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. Actually, weird because we have no no sea. Wait, no, it doesn't make sense. No. There's no sea there no at all. No sea, 
but when you uh, compare t to how many um, comparing uh, to other country serves uh, in Switzerland there's so many that we have now a lot of indoor surfing places we even have this outdoor surf place in Sion you know which they have in America too there's huge yes. artificial like thing. the train going yes, by yes, and yes, it's yes, pulling yes. away we have this in our small uh, country so for those people which don't know Switzerland too much so for us it's when you tell me I have to drive from Pemberton to Squamish that's wow oh, that's too much <laughs> because we drive in three hours we drive through our whole country the entire country right so when you tell me 45 minutes to go snowboarding yep mm, it's limit huh? <laughs> so uh, all my my <laughs> I have five resorts around my house yeah and they're all 45 to one hour away oh and wow. that's really li limit that's amazing and here they say they drive fix five six hours or even more yep. to go right sure this is incredible yeah for yeah us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's BC, so there's mountain ranges all over the damn place. But yeah, I felt the same way. When I moved out here, I, I, a, a one-hour drive felt like a really long drive. Yeah. And then today, it was two hours and 15 minutes to get here, and no I'm like, ah, that's no problem. Really? Oh. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, the, it's a short drive. Really, really? It, feels, okay. it felt like a fairly and short drive. And the Canadian drive. girls are really nice. They're I, quite I nice. Say. Yeah. They're so, yeah, I so... Married one. So so nice when you say you're from Switzerland. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> the Americans are more. Um, Hi, how are you? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm not sure if they really mean it or just say <laughs> things. You know. The, yep. The Canadian girls are more more straight. Yes. Is that right? I they say what direct. they want. Yeah. They say, hey, hi, to, how are you? Go to Quebec. Yeah. Yeah. The look girls in there are so, st so to the point. Oh, Whoa, yeah. That, Crazy. I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just, nice. Okay. Yeah. By the way, sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. Hey, is Jose Fernandez is also Swiss? Yeah. That guy. Okay. I, I call, I, Jose Fernandez. Yeah. yeah I, I, I said that Reto was one of the first. Jose was, he was the very very first on the cool guy scene like he's until today a, a big influence for me so when i have a, a life problem yep. i call him up cool and uh he was um he, he did a lot of things he makes now trampoline halls uh playgrounds in in switzerland yep and in germany and uh yeah he, he does a lot still riding and he gets, I think, two new knees now. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they're really not good. He does, like, skydiving, like the squirrels Yeah, because of stuff. the knees. Holy he couldn't, shit. He couldn't snowboard, mm. so he started to skydive. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So does he still snowboard a little, but, like, no. just... No. No, it hurts His really knees are that bad. And he needs new, new knees oh, now. Oh, fuck. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He sent me some squirrel suit stuff, some flying, like indoor flying yeah, stuff that yeah, he was doing. Yeah. He's uh but he's really always on 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 fire. He's doing a lot. He's really active, and cool. he he has a really cool way of living because he lives in hotels. He has no home. What? He has one bag with two pairs of jeans, two pairs of same T-shirt, and two pairs of uh, I think sweatshirt. And that's it. And uh, what? he has a laptop. And yeah, he lives like this since years now. No way. And I told him, I always help you with an apartment, man. Yeah, yeah, if you need in. one, I got yeah, one yeah, for yeah. you. I help you. And he's like, really, no, no, I don't problem. want that. Yeah, no, yeah. he's cool. It's, it's a lifestyle choice that he's made. He obviously doesn't have kids and a wife then. He's just... Yeah, he has in Saint-Tropez, I think. Yeah. They are, I think. In, yeah. All right. That's still running. That's still running. I can hear you. What's the name of the TV show? To Be Wild. To Be Wild. Yeah, that's... And wh who produces this? That's Th a Swiss uh, not, uh, television uh, a company. So like you say, in, in Switzerland, you're a famous dude. So then somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you, you want to do this TV show? We no, got this I, idea. I saw a producer and I... 
and I said, hey, this other show uh, from the guy who was uh, um, running through Switzerland were, was really cool. I loved it. R beautiful um, pictures and stuff. But so boring. <laughs> a little bit boring. <laughs> sure, sure. I, do you know Bear Grylls? I would like to have a show like Bear Grylls with celebrities. I can go. I take them out of their modeling stuff and, and we go two days in the nature and do some action with me. Oh my I, God. I, I show them survival hacks and, and stuff. No and, way. And just before I came here to Canada, I was uh, filming uh, six television shows. It was quite stressful. I was scared too. Huh? Yeah, yeah. In some, some situations. I'm not Bear Grylls, but <laughs> I am a snowboarder. <laughs> I'm not the survival dude. <laughs> So I, I just filmed it, yeah. Yeah. So do they, how how scripted is it? Like, do they write a script? This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do this this day. Hike to this lake. Quite professional. Do the thing? I had a crew yeah. of ten people. Yeah. 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 I, I have those runners. I had those uh, social media guys, which were filming also. So Rad. I had four filmers. Jeez. And when we jumped out of the airplane, there was a film. Two filmers filming me and the other guy and. Uh, to be wild it's called yeah and i simulated like i was in the gondola on the roof and she saw that's a gag and i was like yeah that i organized that for you a really beautiful girl um famous girl and then uh we simulated a um electronic problem and then i call up the helicopter and they evacuated us under the rope with her oh brought my us God. up on the top of the mountain no. to eat a cheese fondue <laughs> romantic with candlelight even her husband is gonna not beat that one man <laughs> i made it <laughs> this i can't wait to see this show this sounds amazing yeah it's gonna be on on uh, instagram probably too i'm gonna send you then a link uh, put yeah. it on yeah we'll put uh, it on for the people for because sure. they don't have the chance probably to see it i think it's it's a fun show so is it in english or is it in swiss no it's really swiss german but yeah, i think swiss when, when you see you know a few cutouts yep. of the action we you'll do, get it uh, yeah uh, and the beautiful mountain scene it's uh, similar to Canada, of course, but yes. it's, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, the Swiss Alps are, I mean, obviously super legendary. But we are not compared to here. We are not allowed to ride uh, snowmobiles. Oh, uh, okay. We are we uh, all the stuff you see. We had to hike because we are not allowed to take helicopters either because we they are not allowed to to land on on all those um, uh, peaks. Right. Not allowed. Yeah, so heli boarding, the, cat boarding, the all access, started here. Yeah, but we we really need to know the area where we ride because we go up with the gondola. Then we know when we hike up this peak, we can go and drop the back. Yeah, and we actually we feel like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's see, I've always heard that the Alps, especially, are kind of wide open, not the roped off, stay in bounds kind of. Like you're just free to ride from resort to resort, even, and then take a shuttle back to where you parked your yes, car. Yes, yes, this yeah. is true. Yeah. This is true. But for filming, you know, we are not so flexible. Mm. We cannot like uh, like they, the crew here, they do. You know, I'm gonna uh, ride you up quick with the snowmobile. <laughs> right. I go down, film you, yeah. then you put me up. Yeah. It's Have one chance. Oh wow. You're gonna hike up three hours. <laughs> You're gonna, oh, wow. you, you know, you're gonna. Well, it's no wonder the hatchets hey, didn't come over there because they were over. No, they were on sleds. Possible. Yeah, they were on sleds no. from no. very, very early you on. You see, that's why yeah. Yeah. we were uh, also a little. We had a half pipe, we had some right. jumps. Right, right. Uh, but no film crew. Nobody see, came I never, to film. Uh, I, I never really thought about it, but you're putting the pieces together right now. Is that if you don't have that quick access to like. You know, okay, that one wasn't so good. Go to just to the left. I'll move yeah, the shot and we'll, chance. yeah. So that's why we really have to know what we do. Yeah. And uh, it's life or death over there too. Like I, I read the, the story of Marco Safredi. He's a, he was a French uh, snowboarder. He never really made it on the competition scene, but he, be, he was the very first kid to uh, snowboard top to bottom of Mount Everest by himself. And then he disappeared. He went to do it again, and he disappeared. Yeah, 
Right. But, but they talk a little bit about the, um, like, just the the ski town mentality of, like, you're looking around at these amazing peaks, and the there are famous, famous skiers who were the first to ride them, famous snowboarders who were the first to to go, you know, and they hike up, like you say, and it's not a media event. It's just a, like, you know, there's the stamp, okay? He was the first guy to do that. We, we saw all those Americans and all those films in Europe. Yes. And uh, we thought we are riding goods too, and that was a... And nobody l looked at us, so we had to come over here and, and show them a little bit Yeah. who Europeans were. Yes. And when Terry Hawkinson and all those guys then showed up, they were quite surprised <laughs> too, <laughs> yes. because they thought Americans were the best on earth. Um, be sure. careful, there are other countries too, and we had an eye on them, and uh, we saw the films actually good for us, because all... They open up the cards, you know, yes. in this game because we <laughs> saw their tricks and we trained them harder than they thought. We came here, did uh, those competitions, and we stuck it all. Yeah. And and uh, we all of a sudden it was like uh, so many Europeans showed up and they were like, "What the fuck? Yeah. Who are they? Who is this name? Who is that guy? Who is Fabian Rohrer? <laughs> you know, is this weird last name?" And <laughs> and this is a uh, this was a. Uh, uh, interesting thing to to see how what was your first trip to america like w were you going for a competition where to did you Stratton, go uh, yeah yep. to mount snow i did the north um, they sent me to the north american championship yeah there i won this this competition so the yeah. north american champion <laughs> and then i i went to this uh, u.s open yep uh, that was really impressive too i, I really like that a big cool event I, like yeah. Insane. Yeah. I, yeah. I, U.S. Open in Stratton was the best. I heard it's not anymore in in Stratton. It's a uh, it's uh, somewhere else. It I might be know. on hold. Yeah. The or, U.S. Open yeah, might be on But they redo the U.S. Open every year with old riders. They invited me. I wanted to go there this because I would have been the only European competing there against all those uh, Ross Powers was competing there. Yes. All those guys. And I wanted to, 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 to battle me with them again. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't go. You know why? Because I'm not vaccinated. Oh, you know? wow. Because, you know, the system wanted to push me to, to, to be vaccinated. No, yeah. my heart said, don't do that. So I, I am not vaccinated. So I was not allowed to travel. Uh, what a pain in so the ass. But, but Canada was open. Yeah. So so I'm here, I'm safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but next year I can go in the country USA and I will compete there. Sick. Yes, half pipe. Yeah, one of the things about Terrier that surprised me was that, uh, you know, because we started talking about the Olympics and about the reasons that he didn't like it, and which were many. There were a lot. It wasn't just one thing. But one of the things he mentioned is that his dream contest would be where everyone is there and nobody's hurt which i was like that seems weird why would How he want hurt? that he he doesn't want anyone to be hurt everybody is is uh healthy and riding as best they can because he thinks only then can you say like i beat that guy right like lots of people on the show have said oh yeah i went to a contest and i beat jim rippy or whatever but maybe Jim was hurt at that contest. You know, doesn't what I mean? matter. It's competition yeah. is competition. Competi yeah. There, I'm not yeah. with him. Completely yeah. not. <laughs> and uh, I, I think when you have a bad day, you have a bad day. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, at the Olympics, uh, I did the same run and I won the world championship. And on the Olympics, I got fourth. Yeah. So when you watch the Olympics, it's a weird thing too because all the time guys win there or. Uh, or com uh, competitors win there, which you don't expect. Sure. And John Simmon. Yep. Now for real, that yes. was not my main problem. Sure. Uh, not at all. Right. Uh, there was Daniel Frank. Yeah. Uh, those dudes, which were Fuck going Todd off. Was that and the Todd, Todd Richards? Richards? Yes. Oh. oh, he's going off. Yeah. You have to be careful on the X Games. Yeah. There was 
first place, Todd Richards, me in second, and Daniel Frank in third. Right. So you see, in the international competition, we were all really close together, yeah. and those were my problems. Yeah. And and that day, I don't know, and it's judging too, sure. so I got fourth. Yep. The Olympic Games, why did I go? Why did not Terry go? You know, you only can say that something is shit when you made the experience. Sure. I did it. And yep. I tell you, it's shit. Yes. <laughs> I yes. Like that. But That's I great. went there. Yes. So, yes. and yes. I tell you, it's it's like FIFA yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. from f uh, uh, football, yeah. uh, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's they wanted to take me 20% of my sponsorship away when I wear my clothes from my sponsors. Wait, and you I had said, to pay them? I go them? to the media, you had to, pay to them? the EOC, <laughs> uh, and this is not right because we are the we are uh, uh, running that show, and this is not. And in the back, all the IOC or FIFA guys in the full, they make hell of money. Yeah. When you go to Lausanne, uh, where the IOC is, or uh, the other thing in Zurich, FIFA, you see Bentleys, Rolls Royce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they make a hell of the so money. So they're trying of all to take the, the, the out of the pocket of come the. Come on, of it's the not fair. Riders, I, of the there are things going on. What, what I fuck? heard, and I don't want to tell it sure, here. Sure. It's really, really bad. Sure. And and. This is not right. Right. Olympic Games is a good thing. Sure. When you go back to to the uh, 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 Romans, sure, uh, uh, they got together and see who's the best. Right. All good. Yeah. But then, of course, some guys thought, yes, we do that, and we make a hell of a money out of it. Unbelievable. And, and this is what Terrier thinks I think went to the wrong direction and he's right there but still I say it again you can only say something when you you really were there you felt it you talked to the people you you I went looking around you know they had no bar for the athletes just to chat together right. I was not allowed to I'm Swiss you're Canadian you have a, a batch with a, uh, with a scan code so the Japanese said, no, you're not allowed to go to my room. And I the cannot fuck? go to your room what? to hang out. And we're buddies. That's we, insane. We, we compete against each other, of course. But Mike Mangelschok, he's my buddy. So fuck it. Yeah. You know, and this is not cool. This no. is not snowboarding for no. me at the Olympics. You know, That's bizarre. so what me and Max did, we went to the next hotel, rented the room and put on, on the door bar. <laughs> so that was the bar. Yeah. So I invited all the girls from the from the um, from the breakfast uh, thing um, from the hotel to the bar, so that those were our bartenders. <laughs> so we had a really great time, and all the athletes we met after uh, uh, the training there had a beer together, had a good time. So I organized myself at the Olympics with Max Plotzenader ourselves, and we had a good time all the athletes together you know this is the the, the yeah it shouldn't be it shouldn't be separate no why would you it, like Me against you yeah right and then because you're from the same country now all, you're all buddies but that's not the way that works either right you now you're on a trip with some guy that you you couldn't care less about and meanwhile your friends are you're locked out that, by a that's scanner. why i don't really? like that's it that's up. why i i appreciate more this competition x game yeah i was on this um uh first uh first issue of x games they invited me there sick uh, like when they still were on like the shovel races and all that kind of crazy shit like they did n no they were not spectators allowed and they were oh wow just uh uh doing for espn and yep. followed us with cameras yep and that was the weirdest thing too but it was snowboarding todd richards was there uh, ross powers all those guys yeah. so uh, that was a really fun thing. I still have this this uh, X Games medal. It looks same like today. Wow. So, yeah. I'm what did, what, what did you win? What place did you win? Uh, yeah. Second, yeah. Second uh, Todd place. Richards was first. Me, yep. I was second. And yep. Daniel Frank from Norway was That was the one, two, three. Was third, yeah. And that was the, that was the um, Olympic year too? Like that was 98 no, or whatever it was? it was later. It was later. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to two Olympics? Did you go to 2002? No, no. 
That I was didn't, Salt Lake I City. I would not ever go again. Oh, you went to one and then you then you boycotted bullshit. it. Then you were like, this fuck is this not shit. cool. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, there was a Jump real... events were cool. Yeah. Like Toyota Big Air in Japan, I won. Sick. Uh, Did uh, you win a Toyota? You win a truck? Yeah. I, 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 I won all those competitions at this jump event in Sapporo we had one too so then what do you do with the truck sold it there I just got the money cash in in Japan yeah and when you get like 30,000 or 40,000 cash um, <laughs> you cannot take it out so no. so I had to give to Michi Albin 10,000 <laughs> and to the other friend 10,000 and after when we went to the next competition uh, they gave it back like wow this, um, you have wow. to 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 uh, put uh, in the form how many how much money you have. Yep. So everybody put ten thousand. That's unfucking believable. That's what we did. And you got the money back. These are good friends. Of course, and Michi Alvin lost his ten thousand, but there was his his prize money. I think that was from Japan. Uh, he was uh, he lost. He didn't know. He was Fabian. I don't know where. I, uh, no, I don't know where I put this ten thousand dollars. No way Michi Albin Burton Rider lost his 10,000 <laughs> dollar cash we won I won the competition Michi was second and Max Plotzenegger was third something like <laughs> this and he, he lost it <laughs> I can't believe it that's insane it's true 10,000 that's a lot of money to lose yes. just like misplaced oh I left that on the I left that on the bed in the hotel room I guess it's a no, giant he, tip. Yeah, he took it. He doesn't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. That's no. incredible. Yeah, what a what a time to be in snowboarding. You were in when the money was the most that it ever was, right? Like big contracts and winning a truck, thirty thousand cash. Like what the fuck? That's Each awesome. Each competition, Aaron style, twenty five thousand cash. Then thirty thousand. Ca- you made a lot of cash. Jesus, that's amazing. Next to the sponsor thing, because Nitro, I cannot say the amount, but Nitro yeah. paid for the boards. Yep. Then extra for the bindings. Yep. Oh and wow. Extra for this and that. Yeah. So Nitro had. Did they have uh, outerwear as well in yes. Europe? It, we didn't get that over here. They have it now. The that's the Legend One. Legend One. L1. Yep. It's, uh, I'm riding this close. They're, they're really good. I yeah. really like it. Yeah. It's a high-end. Um, it's not not that cheap, but it's a really good product, I think. Sick. Uh, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that about Rad Air, was that they had boards, bindings, and outerwear. But my son says he's cooler. He's riding for Volcom. Yeah, Volcom's pretty badass. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's no problem. His way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> over here you need you need Gore-Tex, and Volcom's got the Gore-Tex market fairly locked down. Okay. Like they've got like a lot of a, a lot of really nice pieces that are done in Gore-Tex. Okay. Lots of different cool colors and shit. And I mean, it rains, right? You could yeah. be riding and it's raining. Yeah. So but you need it to be. Yeah, but we have so good material. It's not yeah. like back then. Yeah, you know what? There's a lot. There's a lot of really good materials, stretch materials, and yeah. highly waterproof stuff. Used to be Gore-Tex was like a step above. I think everybody's pretty much caught up at this point. Yeah. Sick. So your boy is is doing it the th- same thing. That's it's almost impossible to do now. And right? I'm proud for him, not because I did that. It's just that. He, he's having really fun <laughs> in snowboarding and gets the spirit and the people seem to like it because when you go on the first three uh, films in TikTok, yep. he has one, 1. 1.3 million views, 1.1 million views and 1 million views. Okay, wait. And so it wasn't, you're not saying that he's got a million views altogether. He's got million view per post. And these are, the and these are snowboarding. Yeah, I was just following him in, in Finland and uh, one tutorial and one full gas action uh, yeah, where sick. he makes a backflip over 16 meter. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> nice. re- really good. So you see, it, it's not only technical stuff. Yes. Yeah. And his community is really, um, 
He's sharing the lifestyle of a snowboarder. Sick. He, he's playing frisbee uh, with an uh, old snowboarder or with Ero Etala. He's yeah. making yeah. shit or with Eki Sorsa. He's doing some <laughs> I stuff. I love this. And you see him making jokes with, uh, with uh, Marcus Cleveland. And I just film it. You That's know? Epic. He's just a boy hanging yeah. out with some top names Legends. that he doesn't know Legends. i don't tell him too much just have fun with them yeah they teach you he has no coach yeah he, he sucks up everything from aero from aki from all those guys they show him some skills and uh, he's making copycat yeah and then That's he it. has then he has good style That's yeah. that really is like if you win the style lottery and you have good style oh it's, I, it's I, I, so I think lucky. That, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's just loading his gun over here. Last, Last week, week they wanted to shoot the duck together, <laughs> for, and he came up to me, Dad. He wants that I shoot the duck with the arrow. I said, Yeah. So shoot the duck. Chuck knows he's the hunter. Yeah, it's hard to hit a duck, isn't it? Yeah, he didn't make it. Then he cried. I said, hey, come on, Jeremy. Mike Michael Chuck is hunting since 30 years. And you show up and you think you just can, you know. It's hard. Learn the it's skills, like in yeah. snowboarding. Yes. Listen to Mike, yes. what he tells you. And, and you get better. We come back and then you <laughs> shoot it then. No problem. <laughs> That's awesome. Because you cannot do that in Switzerland. You get big problem. Yeah. No, you cannot shoot animals. <laughs> you know. I told him this. Don't shoot in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing! You know, the father showing him with his weird friends. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a story. When he goes back to school, right? Oh yeah, I shot at a duck, even not hitting it. Still. Like I could have no, killed it. He will not yeah. tell that. You know, that's the. No, oh. he, he 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 tells about the nature, what he does here, and yeah, yeah. 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 He yeah. knows he can he can uh, separate. Hey, that's awesome. What man. he says. Yeah, yeah. So he's in school, obviously, most of the year, good part of the year, and then so you guys he's go the, you guys in, go snowboarding uh, after school. He's and in the international it. school. Right. Because I knew when he's gonna be bigger, I wanna travel again. Yeah. And uh, now he, it's his age now, eleven, so we can go further. Yeah. And he needs to talk English. That's yep. why I put him in the English school. His English is that, great. That yeah, yeah he, he have better than mine. Yeah, and yours that, is good too. Uh, yeah. He, was he, was your English bad when you first came here, or was it good? You were okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just they always said at the. The, you talk Euro English, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so talk German or Swiss German. <laughs> yeah. I try. Yeah. At least yeah. you understand what I want to say. Totally, totally. But, you know? Yeah, it's it's really mind bending for Canadians and especially Americans that in most European countries you learn three or four or five languages. It's not uncommon to to know a lot of languages. Because you drive four hours. In this direction, they only talk Italian. Yes. This direction, only talk French. Yeah. Other direction, German. Yeah. You need to, yeah. to, to, you know, all the contracts, all the renting contracts, everything. Everything, yeah. right. Even yeah. the girls, when you want to <laughs> have a drink, <laughs> you dois parler français. <laughs> yeah, but you talk here French too, on a the little. other side of Canada. Yeah, a yeah so like we, we, we learn it in school, but it's, we, it's not as serious. It doesn't seem like, it seems to me that the Europeans I've met speak functional English. Like they, they can function in English and hold a conversation like you say, it's I know French, but in Quebec or even you know in France, I would probably trend towards. Oh, do you speak English? As opposed to even trying, it's embarrassing to no, not know. For that, us that in much. Switzerland, they they uh, I, they learn us that kind of they expect from us that we know. So we grow up like this, and uh, we grow up also when we travel somewhere, we check your behaviors mm. Mm -hmm. that we don't make any fault right because your culture is different than our culture right and we have to respect some sure. things 
and we are really neutral country and we don't want to step on your feet right so and we take this serious and i and i l teach this to my son too <laughs> respect the others <laughs> i'm still thinking about you burrowing through the snow to the Japanese showing my girls. <laughs> yeah yeah i did it's a lot a of uh, other different things too <laughs> this was uh uh, exchanging the culture <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> it's incredible man you are a real treat to have on the show thank you for bringing your story here and and uh, following up with me because I was like yeah I want to have you on the show 100% you're one of the fiercest competitors out there in snowboarding and you were a, a, a mega pro during the time where being a mega pro meant you know, fame, fortune, the whole the whole thing. It's I think it's a much harder to be a pro snowboarder now than it was back then. Just because you've got to have another job, it, it, you have to have another focus. You know, like That's you true. can't just live the snowboard lifestyle as well as you could back then. That's my own opinion, but I and I I see that. Yeah, but so, thank you for having me, and I, I hope that you're viewers you know understand now a little more about europeans about older snowboarders sure and about our culture yeah between america and europe yeah and how we write what we write and when they see this show now or he listen to this, yep. they know a lot more, I think. I think I do. I definitely feel like I do. I would have never known that thing about no snowmobiles and how it impacted the yeah. filming scene. Because, yeah, most of the big mountain riding of even the, the American guys is in 100%. You go to Alaska, you go to Interior BC, you come up here. There's almost nothing shot yeah, in, like in Europe. Yeah, like this marketing thing from Jones, you know, on Jones snowboards that he all hike, <coughs> hike up his mountains. We were like, yeah. That's all we do. We, we do that too. Right, right. Okay, perhaps not that extreme like he does. It's a, a, He does really re, uh, rad stuff, but yep. we do that too. Yeah, that's the culture. Yeah, that's the culture. Is there's no heli boarding over there at all? No. Wow. Have you been heli boarding? Yes. It's a helicopter right. going by. Where did you go? Let's. <laughs> a helicopter. Uh, <laughs> where did I go? Was it here in BC? Canada. Yeah, yes. For, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here, probably. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like yes. Whistler heli or something. Yeah, but I didn't do uh, that a lot because we hike and build the kickers. Yeah, uh, like this. yeah, yeah. That's why I don't have to go to a to a gym. Right, right, <laughs> That's exactly. That's our training. Yeah, it's enough. You're walking, you're hiking, you're it's, building the jumps. It's so boring to go to the gym and look <laughs> into a television. <laughs> oh, this is sucks. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I rather go kayaking up a river yeah. than going to a gym. I swear, yeah. I don't do that. So when you had a trainer, what was he training you to do physically? Were, were you in a gym with a trainer or was he telling you go hot, kayak up the a The training was really hard. It was uh, different in Finland. They, they, he said, that's a, a alpine rider, you know, this parallel slalom thing. Yes, yes. He's going to make a time now. you got to beat it. Oh, wow. And before you don't beat it, you cannot carve. So you don't go to the half pipe. So in my training, I wow. had to to carve and learn carving for two weeks. Yeah. Until I bet this time. Wow, that's fucked up. In my up. freestyle board. That makes sense. Yes. Oh, and, and you were riding a freestyle board against this against an alpine race, like a yeah. long ass. Probably board. he did not went full full. No, you know, of but course. He went fast he went for it. It's like yeah, fuck. yeah, fast. Good luck. Uh, good luck. Yes. Good luck. So that was just an example of a training Very thing, cool. what we had. Very cool. And before we were allowed to go and hit the jumps, we, we always had seven laps of carving, switch and normal, and wow. then go. Wow. That's why half pipe riding uh, was, that's really technical and you need to know how to carve. 
That's to taking accelerate it very and serious. be fast. Yeah, yeah. That was what that was what put Terrier above everybody. He was, was a he was an alpine snowboarder yeah, before yeah, he. Yeah. That's why he knows how to carve. His, he knows how his to ride. edge control is unfucking believable. So, yeah, because he yeah. was learning from the begin from zero on how to slalom. Yeah, yeah, that is dope. And uh, on hard boots. I look forward to riding with you in Europe, man. I'm coming over. I'm gonna do it. No, trip. I'm gonna come to Banff. <laughs> or Banff oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that too. Yeah, Sunshine yeah, yeah. Village Sunshine Village to, this, to uh, Holy Bowly. Holy yeah. Bowly. Yeah, you want to do Holy Bowly? Yeah, for sure. I come and jump. We're there. getting you invited please. to that yes, for sure. Please. And then, and then yeah. when you come to Europe, yeah. always welcome. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I, I, I've, n I haven't ever ridden there yet. Really? I, isn't that insane? In all the years, I never, I just never made it over there. You should come to our OG camp. Yes. In 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 April. In April. Twenty four. Okay, that's Keep perfect. Keep that in mind. OG Why camp. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and see some old friends. Yeah. We, we were gonna see. go to the Rad Air Longboard Tanker ah, Classic. Ah, Stuben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were gonna go to that. Do that because Cross it's around. And everybody's there. It's all the old during guys. During Ispo, right? Snowboard like, yeah. Scene. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I think it's during Ispo. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I might do that. And then, I don't know when uh, that is. then, uh, and then co come, to come that. over to yeah. to Switzerland. Hell yeah! Yeah, do that it. Sounds like and fun. even when it's it's finished the season, we can go to South Fe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or these are legend. The these map. are legendary places. South Fe is where Jose Fernandez had the very first snowboard camp there. That's yes. what started Tim Wendell's. That's what started Craig Kelly's Camp of Champions. Was there was already snowboard camp? And I did the and freestyle yeah. park. There. Did you? So no. Say, yes. Really? I built a setup. Holy shit. Yeah. Like with you sat in the cat with the guy or you just wrote it no, down and I told him what to do? No, I said the distances. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah. The gaps and Sick. the angles Sick. and I tried it before we let the others go. Really? That's what I did. Yes. Fucking right. Yes, back then. That's epic. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it was so good. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I just liked it. <laughs> the the gap <laughs> not a lot of guys hit it, but yeah. um, yeah, it was good. That's super rad. All right. Okay, are we done? Yes. Thank you very Thanks, much. Huh? <laughs> Amazing. Okay. That was awesome. So we hit everything? I think we hit everything. Yeah, oh, so much. Yeah. F and rad shout outs this week to Fabian and his son Jeremy. Special thanks to Mike Michaelchuk and his property, Greenwater in Pemberton. If you want a free sample of New Greens, tag two friends and New Greens in the Instagram feed of F and Rad and we'll ship you some. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding presented by Skyview Campers and brought to you by F and Rad Productions.